This keyboard right here, the Cooler Master CK720, could have been, should have been, uh, still might be to you, the best big brand out of the box gaming keyboard. All right, all right, let me settle down here a little bit, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna spoil it here, guys. This keyboard is phenomenal, but there is one flaw, very small, but big flaw in this keyboard that just irks the lights out of me. No, 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 I didn't say turn off the lights, I said the flaw irks the lights out of me. Golly, who's running this production here? So take a look at the Cooler Master CK720, you're seeing a lot of similarities from the CK721 we recently covered, right? You got 65% layout, you got your little knob over here and everything, but there's a lot of differences packed within this board. So first off, in your box, you get your quick start guide, your manual, which everything can be controlled right on the board, or you use the Cooler Master software, which I absolutely hate, but again, it's awesome that everything can be controlled right on the board and it saves to it. Keycap and a switch puller right here, because yes, this board is hot swap. You get your detachable USB-C cable and Cooler Master is now selling corny coiled cables. All right, so what the heck is different from the CK720 and the CK721? Well, let's not waste any time and let's dive right into it here. On the side over here, just like the CK721, you can remove the top plate, which is such a stinking pain. Like Cooler Master, this is like the goofiest. Ah, oh, gee whiz, did I get it? Hold on, I think it's still latched in there. This, there we go. So we got the top plate off. Again, you can swap them with the Cooler Master ones out there. So what you're seeing here, number one, you're seeing your PBT keycaps. You got your plate. You see that purple underneath there? There's dampening foam all with underneath this. Double layer dampening foam within this keyboard. I want to show you the other thing. That is, yes, this board being hot swap. Now they have the Kale Box V2 switches on here. I don't know why the heck they sent me tactiles. I hate tactile switches. But anyways, that is what we have on this board and it still sounds amazing. Anyways, as you see, the PCB camera focus. There we go. Look at that right on spot. But you can see the PCB is a five pin PCB and the switches they're putting in the board are actually five pin switches. That's awesome. And a lot of the big brand companies doing their hot swap boards, a lot of them are still three pin. So seeing that right there, that double layer dampening foam, the five pin hot swap. And yes, these stabs are generously lubed right down there on the bar. These feel and sound amazing. So let's go on and do a sound test of the CK720. Again, we have Kale Box V2 brown switches. Hold on, let me, let me make this look, there we go, that's better. I'm sure we can all agree that this sounds amazing from a big box company store bought shelf keyboard. It sounds phenomenal. Could the space bar use a little work? Sure, I think so. Maybe slap a little extra lube on there, something will be good to go. But across the board, heh, across the board, you get it? The stabs, the switches, everything sounds amazing and it feels just as good as it sounds. Now there's also a lot more packed on this board here. As you're seeing with that 65% layout, you got your shortcuts, you got your arrows. On your keycaps, you have every shortcut printed on them. A lot of people don't like that. They say it's messy. Me personally, I love it. So I know what every shortcut is right there. I'm not gonna keep the stinking manual out. Now you also have the knob over here, which is gonna control your volume, your tracks, your media controls, and then also your RGB. Once you go down here, function into a profile, and then your knob will change over to whichever, again, profile you're setting to adjust. Now underneath the board, as you see, you have your rubber feet, you have two levels of pop-out feet. You got your low setting and then your high setting there, whichever one you want. Me personally, I like leaving it on the stock ergonomic incline right there, absolutely perfect. That's that door on the side to remove that top plate, which is still a little goofy to me. And as you're seeing, the RGB on the CK720 is very crisp. I love it because it's subtle, it's not bleeding out or anything. It's just a nice, manageable, kind of professional RGB if we put it that way, right? And like I stated, you can go fun 
function. And then it's your profiles right down here to set your knob to be able to control the RGB into your effect or whatever. If you just slide it over, bam, we'll go into each different effect like that. Now, if you want to adjust the color of your RGB, you actually come over here to function and you got your red, green, and blue adjustment, kind of like you've seen on ducky boards before. So you can get that exact color that you're looking for. Hold up. In the beginning, I stated this could have been, or it almost was, the best big box company keyboard. Well, I'm going to dig my hole even deeper here, because this keyboard comes in at only a hundred bucks. So what is wrong with the Cooler Master CK720? A lot of you are going to say, Techni, you're petty. It's sounding perfect, right? But whenever we come over to the backside and we see our USB-C connection port right there, you're going to see mine all chewed up and everything all cut up. That is not from Cooler Master. I actually did that myself trying to cut it out because I couldn't fit any of my cables in there. Any. None. Not a single one I have, and I have tons, would not fit in there. Now, if you come even closer and look at that corny coiled cable I was talking about, take a look at the end of it right here. Hopefully my camera can focus. See how it's thick? Bam, then it notches down, and then it goes into the USB-C. Well, this notch right here was the one that actually went into the back of that case. So you'd click it in, bam, the USB-C would go in, then that notch would go around the little housing right there. So it would fit perfectly in there. Same when you go to the one that comes with it, it's just small like that, so again, it would go into that notch. Well, unfortunately, just about no cables are that small. I tried using some of my custom cables, my custom coiled ones, my custom straight ones, my custom paracord ones, even a razor or a steel series cord, just because I wanted to use one of my custom cables. I didn't want a rubber one, and I didn't want a coiled one. Well, not a single one would fit. Okay, I get it. It's petty. It's mild. Just use a stock cable that came with it. Yeah, I kind of wish I would have, because now the cable won't sit in it at all, and no matter what I use, it kind of wobbles around real loosely. So yeah, I ruined my board, which honestly, I'm upset about, because I absolutely love this board, and I wanted to use it more. I'm going to take the fault. I'll take that fault, but I think it is the absolute horrible, ridiculous, just who thought of this design, Cooler Master? Like, that needs to be addressed, and that needs to be fixed. But at the end of the day, yes, no joke, I love the CK720 keyboard. I highly recommend it. If you can deal with that cable issue, you're perfectly fine. At 100 bucks, this thing is phenomenal.